Welcome back. In this video, I'll be defining some routes for this application so I can open up the web browser and start interacting with the server. A route in this case is a mapping of URL patterns to request handlers, and they define how the server finds the right Python function to execute for the request being made. And with that out of the way, the first thing I'm going to do is open up my editor. And I'm going to create a folder called routes. And I want this to be a Python module. So it's going to be, I'm going to put a underscore underscore in it file in it, which tells Python that this folder is a module. And for now, I'm just going to start defining the routes in this init folder or in this init file. Uh, if the application ends up being more complex and I get more routes, then I'll probably break this up into little submodules and have a different file in this folder for each like, portion, for each section of the application. But for now, I'll just put them all in here because I don't think we're going to have that many endpoints. Um, the first thing I'm going to want to do is import some things from Flask. Uh, so from Flask, I'm going to import... I'll probably need the redirect method. And that's how I'm going to be able to return a redirect from the route to say, like, hey, we need to go to this other route. This is going to be important, say, after a form submission, where I might want to return them to the form to submit something else or just in general to, to do a normal redirect. I can think of one case where I want these articles to be listed as being read after they've clicked on it. And so what I think I'll do is have a URL that flags the article as being read in between, and then that URL redirects to the, the article URL. So when they click on the article, it goes to the URL that flags it as read, and that URL then redirects them to the actual article. So we'll need the redirect method, and we'll also want the request method. This is a global in Python that stores some state about the request. Um, one of the things that it stores that we'll definitely need is the form values, so we can grab data that was submitted with the form. So the first method, or the first route that I'm going to define will be, ah, let's define a test route just so I can show you how these work. Uh, so routes are defined with this app.route decorator. And we do have to grab the app. So from app import app, that was what we defined here as this instance of the Flask object. So we've got this app, and we're going to use this app.route method as a decorator for a function that we're about to declare. I'm going to call this one whoop, test get. So the first parameter to the decorator is a URL pattern. And for now, the pattern is just uh, a path on the application. So in this case, slash test. If they visit our website on the slash test path, this request handler is going to be called. And this route will only work for the HTTP get method. So we, this one won't handle any post requests or put or anything like that. It will only handle get requests. And then I've given this function the name test underscore get. That's arbitrary. You can name it anything. Um, I like this convention where this sort of denotes the functionality of the request handler, and this denotes the method. Not everything will fit in that way. You can actually define request handlers that take multiple methods, so this scheme would break down pretty quickly. But for this case, it's going to work. Um, so this is a this is a get request handler. And I'm just going to have it return something. I'll have it return hello world. That's pretty standard first web application stuff. So I've saved this. 
And let me just show how easy this is to to launch. We use Python 3 run.py like we did in previous videos to start the database. Database seems to have started. It tells us where it's running. Now by default, the Flask development server that we're using is going to start on the 5000 port. So if we open up the browser and go to localhost 5000, uh, we get a not found because I just went to the root. I didn't go to a path and we don't have the root defined. So what I defined before was the test path. And if we go to the test path, it is failing. That's because I'm defining these routes and I'm not telling the rest of the server about it. Okay, back to the code. So this new module that I just declared isn't being used anywhere, which means it's not very useful. Um, in the run.py file, all I have to do is import routes right there. So when this is imported, this file basically is going to be executed, which does the declaration of this this function and calls this app.route uh, decorator method. So that should solve the problem. Um, do a quick restart of the server and it failed. Wow. All right. <laughs> this should actually be methods. I don't know why I put method. Like I said, it can take multiple types of method in this one definition. So it's actually the keyword methods, not method, my bad. Okay, now we'll try this again. And this time it ran. Now I can go back to the browser and hey look, hello world. We only messed up like three times, but it works now, so that's good. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Now I'm gonna go back to the editor and add a little bit more functionality. Um, instead of just a get, request, I'm going to define a post request. And again, I'm changing this function name just as a convention. It does actually have to be different than this because there's a way to map back to these function names. But it doesn't have to be in this format. This is just because it's easy for me to remember. So then I'm going to change the methods that are passed to this keyword to post. So now we've got this handler that if a post request is made to our slash test um, path on our web server, this is going to be the request handler. And if a get request is made, a normal like page get request, then this is going to be the handler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the response of this one with a form that tells it to submit with the post method. And inside that form, I'm just going to put an input element with the name. Ah, the name is name. No, that's too confusing. We'll say the name is username to make it a little bit less confusing. So now this input element has a, a form key, a name of username. So whatever whatever is entered into this and then the form is submitted, this value is going to be submitted to this post method and it's going to pass along this username value that they typed in. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so down here, we're going to be receiving that post, uh, the form submission from that post request. So this is where we're going to use that request global that's a part of Flask. And it has a form property on it that represents any forms that were submitted to this. Uh, and that has a method called get. It's actually like a dictionary type object. 
And this method called get allows us to grab the username. It also allows us to grab um, or to set a default value. So if no username is submitted, then the second parameter of this function is going to be used as the username. So if for some reason they submitted this form without this input field, then these three question marks are going to be used as the username in its place. Just so we have some string of some kind. And then I'll just return hello plus username. Cool. So what's going to happen is when we go to this slash test address, this path on our, our web server, it's going to return the contents of this handler because by going here directly, it's a get request. So this function is called and it returns just this string, which is some HTML. And that HTML contains a form with the method post and an input field with the name username. So when this form is submitted, then it's a post request. So it's going to be handled by this route and by this request handler. So the username that they submitted is going to be assigned to this variable because we're getting it from the form. And then we're going to return just some string that says hello and then whatever the username was. So assuming there were no errors, now I can go over to the terminal, restart this again, head over to the web browser. Now if I go here, I just get a text field. So if I enter my name in the text field and then hit enter, it says hello Davy. So it works. Now we've got some basic request handlers so we can handle get requests and post requests. And in the next video, I'll be gluing those request handlers together with our data model so that we can start making this an interactive web application. Bye.